the Blackmagic Fairlight Audio Editor. It's been out for a while now, but there's literally no content on YouTube about it. I've been using it for over a month now on a feature film and I thought it was time to share its feature set and also what I do and don't like about it. Let's get started. A bunch of you may have already seen my videos on the Fairlight desktop console. That's their 12 fader controller that has a transport and some rotary knobs, but that lacks in editing. There are some buttons and you can do some editing on there, but it really isn't great for audio editing. That's where this console comes into play. Let's start with a quick overview of the controller. Up here we have our volume control, so we can control our studio if we've got one for say ADR or recording. We've got dims, mutes, all that kind of stuff, but our main controller here, and you can see on the screen that it's turning that down. We have macros, and I haven't set any up because to be honest, I got straight into this film and just working this thing out that I didn't have time to do that. We've got page buttons up here that uh, correlate with what's at the top there. Uh, obviously some rotary knobs for changing things. This is also some page buttons for what goes down here. They'll do different things as it pops up. So one thing you'll notice is that it's an OLED keyboard. So this all changes depending on what you're doing. So at the top, we have our bank of our uh, channels. So they're color coded and it says DX because they're my dialogue channels. You can scroll down. We've got loop group, we've got effects, and you can go all the way to the bottom. Obviously, it'll go through all the tracks and then it just goes back to the top again. There's also a select all tracks button as well. Underneath our bank of channels is technically a QWERTY keyboard. So if you want to type stuff, whether it's a track name or search for uh, sound libraries within DaVinci Resolve, or alternatively, if you alt tab out of the software, it turns into a QWERTY keyboard so you can use it as your keyboard. That being said, and I'll talk about this later, it's not great for typing. But what you have here is basically all your functions underneath that, and that will change depending on what setup you have, which here are your setups. Uh, you've got obviously control shift and all that sort of stuff. And then we have a transport control here as well as a transport control sort of over this section as well. Uh, I will dive into the, sec uh, the different setups here, but we also have our number pad. So if you want to type in your time code, that also helps with some selections as well. So all these buttons here change depending on what kind of page or what setup we want. So I'm under editor now. So we have fade. So if I press, and the idea would be that you have muscle memory. So if you've got your fingers in the right spot, you press fade. And then on the side here, you've got fade at playhead, fade at tail. You can adjust the level of your fade. So, uh, you know, basically the angle of the fade and the, the cross point, if it's a cross fade as well. So you can kind of nudge the way the fade works. Uh, but if we go to nudge, it'll go nudge left, right. And it, you can also see it here sometimes. So if I go trim slip here, you can see I've got trim head, trim tail, and then there's also trim head and trim tail here. So you could just reach across, or alternatively, you can press it over here, which I found if you're pressing the button and trying to turn the jog wheel, sometimes you lift your finger and it ruins what you're doing. So these could be a good option for you know, pressing uh, trim tail and you trim it, which I'll show you in a minute. We've got arrays. There's other functions within functions too. So let's just say I'm under cut and it says here, cut head, cut tail, uh, cut clip based off, you know, what clip selected. So if you press the track and I've got a clip selected, I can cut the clip and it'll cut it. Or if I hold control, then there's a set of second functions. So we have mute clip. So if I want to mute it, we've got a uh, reverse clip, split clip as well. So there's multiple functions within functions. So you can dive deeper uh, depending on what you're doing. So our main buttons that were like selecting what kind of editing we want to do now, we can hide and show the meters or whatever, even hide and show our effects there. So that's cool. And it honestly, it, there's so many layers to this. It obviously would take you a bit, fair bit of muscle memory, but the fact that there's all these options to dive into what you're doing, it's amazing. So. I will show you how to do some editing in a minute uh, and even how to get around your project a little bit as well. But I'm just going to show you these functions more. So we've got mixer. So we can now on our channel, you know, go to our EQ dynamics and you can see here the pages change. So we can go dynamics, limiter, compressor. We can turn them on or off. Uh, and then we can go to our options uh, to listen and change things. So depending on what we've pressed EQ, now these are EQ. So we can adjust our EQ at sends. So we can adjust our sends based off 
yeah, the particular track that we've selected. And you can also select multiple tracks as well. Uh, but that's the mixer window. So we can do as well uh, our automation controls as well. So if we go to preview mode, we can set our automation into preview mode and test our automation and then punch it in, punch it out on that. Then we've also got the record section here. So this is mostly for recording ADR or if you want to treat uh, Fairlight as a recorder, just record bands, you can use this. But this is really set up for ADR. So you can pull up your ADR lists uh, and do your takes as well. You can also select how much pre-roll you want and what mute mode so that, you know, what tracks mute while you're recording ADR and all that sort of stuff. There's lots of options within that for record. We've got the monitor section, which is great because, you know, at the moment you can see I've got sound ID selected. So I'm listening through a bus that I've created with sound ID. So the master is sent to that bus so I can listen in my treated room with uh, Sonarworks obviously on it. Uh, but when I bounce, I'm bouncing the master without that. But you can listen to particular speakers as well as the 2.0 or your stereo mix or your 5.1 mix. You can pick what bus you want to listen to. Or if you've got things like your, your dialogue and your effects and music bust out, you can just listen to your dialogue tracks rather than going in and muting BCAs or anything like that. You can just press the dialogue bus and listen to that. The setup uh, is basically the main setup for the controller and you can adjust some of the settings on there. There's a few bits and pieces like doing your VCA spill, how that's going to happen. You could open up your buses and check what formatting you've got there. We can also do the utilities here changes the settings of the controller. So say here's QWERTY Auto, which what happens is if you select a track to rename it, then this will turn into a QWERTY keyboard so you can rename the track. If you don't want that to happen because you've already got a keyboard, you can press that QWERTY auto off. So there's options here. And the one thing to note, just as a side note, there are two setups within this. I think it's the old Fairlight setup where you don't get the pretty colors. It's a lot of text and the buttons, you'll get less muscle memory than you would on this. I assume this is the Blackmagic uh, version of the controller. So you can change that. I'm not going to show you that option though right now because there's a lot to show you within this setup. So that's your main setup page. And the last one you've got is macros. So you obviously have your macros at the top here, but you can set up here on this page, there's 33 macros that you can have, uh, which again, I haven't set any up, but there's that option there to have macros to help you get through your project more efficiently. That's the main overview of the controller itself. Just remember that there are layers to everything. So you by either pressing control or shift, or even as I said, you can press the jog wheel uh, button. You've got options there for the jog wheel. There's lots of layers to this thing and it's really well thought out, but you also need to really spend some time with it and read the manual, which I haven't, uh, to really dive into this thing. I'm now going to talk about navigation and how to get through your project really quick. So we have our jog wheel and I have my playhead locked so that when I move through, you can you know see what's coming and what's behind and I don't need to page through the project and it, as the project moves through or I jog around, it all stays with it. As you're moving the jog wheel around, you can see it's selecting clips on the track that I've selected. So I can select multiple tracks and it will select the clip under the playhead or obviously just track one. So it means you can do some editing, which we'll talk about later. But for now, I'll just keep moving on with the uh, navigation. So we obviously can move around. There's fast forward, stop, play, all the usuals. You've got shuttle position if you want to like shoot through your project quick as well. Uh, we can zoom here. So we've got a zoom button. You just put your finger on that. You can zoom in. One thing that I've got set, in, in the, which is in the uh, shuttle options, is that if you're further out, it moves through the project quicker. So if you want to do fine tuning, you can, you know, fine tune, even fine tune. Or if you want to like quickly navigate through the project, you can move out and move around your project like that. If you hold control at the same time, it zooms the tracks this way. If you want to select different tracks, you can do it with the jog wheel by holding shift and zoom and scrolling down. But I'm not sure if because this project's got 300 tracks and it's I'm quite like taxing the computer that it's a bit glitchy, but you can also press shift and down, up and down here, but even that seems a little slow. So I don't know if it's something to do with my track or whether it's what's going on with the software that's buggy, but you can get through your tracks that way. Uh, or as I said before, this is our tracks here as well. So we've got a track uh, 
row here so we can just select our tracks. So if you just press it once, it'll select the tracks. If you press it twice, double tap, it will undo other selections and it will select only that track. You can also press one track here and if you double tap there, it will select the range as well. So that's how you get through your tracks. You've got an up down button so I can, you know, scoot through all of them. Uh, but that's one way to select and the main way that I select my tracks, uh, a good way to navigate. One feature I love in any door is back and play, especially for film because you know, you might be listening to something and you want to just go back a few seconds to listen to it again, or you stuff the automation. You want to go back maybe five seconds and redo it back and play is the way to go. So you literally just press it once and it will go back the amount of times you've selected and keep playing. It's a really great button. Now, one thing that I noticed is if you hold it down, I'm not sure if you can see here, it illuminated the five. So I've currently set it to five seconds. So you can select how far you want your back and play to go by changing the option here. So that's a really cool little feature. As I showed you before, uh, if you wanna get around the software itself, not so much the project, you can hold control and show your audio effects or you know hide the meters or whatever you need to do to have your window maximized to your, you know, an efficient window working space. So the other thing that you can do is just go to. So if we press go to, then you can type in what kind of time code you want and you press go to again and it'll take you there. So I've just taken myself to 100 hours. So that's a quick overview of the navigation. I'm going to show you now how to use the mixer. So if you don't have the other console, which I do here, that's great for obviously doing fader movements. Uh, it's got rotary knobs so you can adjust things like EQ, but this is also great for that too. And I have done pans and even some uh, fader writing with the rotary knob here because if we select, so we've got our first channel selected and we click to the mixer. At the moment I've got on sends, but we could go pan and this gives you a great overview of our, uh, we've got our dynamics, we've got our EQ and our pan just here, but we can change the level. So if we're writing through, we're playing through, uh, our track, we can obviously change our levels and write the automation. I'm in preview mode, so I'm going to turn that off. So you can see here, it's now writing automation on the screen. Uh, so we can write automation, we can do pans, we can, you know, go forward and back in our pans. So you can see we can do our mixing straight from this console here. We don't need to have the other console. If you love faders, which I do, then you're going to need it. But this is great for hands-on work as well. Uh, and it's really fantastic that we can just select whichever window we want. I use this quite a bit, uh, but also this is great for using clip effects, which I use even more because I love to do uh, EQ within a clip itself to just balance it with other clips. And we can do that within this console on the edit window. I won't go into full detail about mixing, but as I said, you've got your punch uh, and preview for your automation when you want to write automation. Uh, we can change whether we're in touch, latch, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then obviously you've got your sends and you've also got your plugins as well. So you can control your plugins from this console and you just need to page, see how there's pages. So you just need to page through either to the plugin itself or to its parameters. I'm now gonna show you how to edit the clips with this audio editor. Uh, I'd have to say that it's way more fun than using a mouse and keyboard. I'd almost say it's quicker within Fairlight. I know a lot of people, including myself, are really fast at editing with a keyboard and mouse in Pro Tools, but I find, and it may be just a time thing, that I haven't spent a lot of time in Fairlight that I don't think that I'm that fast with a mouse. I don't know that it's as intuitive as Pro Tools when it comes to just editing with a mouse, but this controller makes it great. So we have a clip here and we want to um, trim, so we want to slip trim, so it basically knows where you are on the clip if you're at the front. And so we can move that out. We go to fade and we add a fade here. And what we can do then is change the shape of the fade. Uh, and if you want to, we can, you know, extend that fade there as well. Let's just say you've started a new project and you've got your AAF imported, then you have your track layouts underneath that. And you might be listening through your solo stuff, you'll solo that track and go, all right, that's my main bit of dialogue. You might have production effects below it or whatever, but we want to cut that or we'll, what we'll do is copy it because we want to keep the AAF all original so that if we ever need to go back and get the original audio, it's right there for us. So what we do is we go to the copy section, we can uh, press the copy clip button and you can see there that it's copied it. Let's go down to our DX channel and we just press enter and it's pasted in. And then we can go back 
and just keep listening through. So we go back to channel one, just listen through, get to our next channel. We go, oh, that's production effects. So we want to go copy clip. We'll go down to, let's just say that's our production effects channel and we paste it in. So you can organize your track and get things moved where you want it to be really easily. And then we have the original copy uh, in our AF channels at the top. And that's something you can just hide away. Once you start working in the project, you mute it, hide it away, and then you have the originals there if you need to go back to them. Uh, but we can also select multiple tracks. So if we've got two tracks of audio here, we can just select both. And now they're both selected because they're on the playhead and we can copy both of those and move them down. So it's you know really easy to, to copy, cut, paste, or even erase. So we can erase clips. And just note that these buttons also a lot of the times have second functions. So you can keep your hands in the same spot and get muscle memory going. So if we're in the cut page, if you hold control down, you see that this turns from uh, cut play head tail, cut clip to reverse clip, split clip and mute clip, which I use mute clip all the time because I'll just mute ones that I'm not going to use. And I can always come back to them later if I don't want them there. Uh, but each one a lot of the time has a second function within that. The other thing is you can see here it's got in and out. So that's our in and out point. So we can select a range and do things to the range, whether it's clip gain, all that kind of stuff. But if we select uh, the trim slip, the same buttons are there and there. Because I find that, you know, if you're going to select, let's just say this track and you want to uh, extend the front, when you go to do it, sometimes you lift your finger and it stuffs up. So what can be good is just to use that one instead so that you've got a good finger on each. Uh, but that changes depending on that. But it's interesting because they've done that for trim slip, but they haven't done it for the play, uh, the fade in and out, the fade head and tail. Uh, there's the in and out still there, which is not a problem. It's not the end of the world, but for some reason they've done it for some buttons and not the other. So you just need to know that as well. One thing I like as a dialogue editor is to have clip effects. So you might want to EQ one particular clip to fit next to another, or you might want to chuck some reverb just on one piece of dialogue. You can do that with clip effects. So here we have either effects or we could go EQ. So this is the internal sort of, this is a native EQ for Blackmagic. And you can see what's on the screen is now here. And you can obviously adjust each one. You can turn the bands on and off. You can change what type of band it is as well, and then you can just adjust accordingly. So I can adjust the clip uh, EQ for each separate clip uh, and then match you know, two pieces of dialogue. You can also add VSTs to clips. So if we click the effects button and then you can either click plug in here or here, click plug in, then you've got all your categories. So you can go through and pick your category, whether you want EQ reverb, but also I set up favorites. So I could quickly either put some sort of noise reduction or a separate EQ or a reverb, and you just press the button and it is applied and you can then adjust it accordingly. The other thing that we have is clip gain, which is just the level button here and we can adjust the clip gain. So clip gain will work either if you have a range selected, it will do that range. So I've got two clips selected in that range. It'll adjust it. If you have keyframes on your clip gain within a clip, you can select a range or a range of clips and then just adjust the level accordingly there. This is a quick overview of the audio editor and I don't want to dive too deep and make this video too long. I thought it's best to put this video out and you guys can ask some questions. So if you have any questions, write them in the comment below and I will make a secondary video to go over any of the questions you might have. What I like about this thing is it helps whip around your project really quick. It's the editing feels great. I don't get fatigued from using a mouse and keyboard. It's fun. It actually feels great to use it, to whip around, to do the editing. And you don't get fatigue in your hands because you're doing different things at different times. I feel like Fairlight as an editor, you really need this. As in doing it with a mouse and keyboard, it's not the same. You, It really helps you control every aspect of the software. And to have things like the rotary knobs to do pans and things while you're watching a film and doing automation, it's more hands-on than just clicking or drawing. And I really, I find it fun to work with. The OLED part of this keyboard is amazing. The fact that it's like a stream deck, things change depending on what you're pressing. There's layers to it. So you're not bound to just one button doing one thing. You know, even the fact that pressing the 
uh, back and play button. The fact that I can live adjust that if I'm doing something and I want it to go further, it's just such a quick adjustment. I don't have to dive into a menu or anything like that. It's made beautifully. It feels sturdy. This thing's nice and hard. The buttons are great. The rotary knobs feel fantastic to move. So they've built something quality and I can see why it has quite a big price tag on it and it wouldn't be cheap to build all this OLED system you know, in the keyboard. There's two things that I hate about this keyboard and pretty passionately. One, this is a firmware update. There's no crossfade button. So you can fade in and out and it's made more for the layered editing feature, but there's no crossfade button. It's something they are gonna add, but it isn't there now, which I find stupid that you can't just select two spaces, uh, two sections and just crossfade them together. I have to use a shortcut on my keyboard to do that or the Stream Deck. The second thing is it's not a great keyboard for typing. The buttons feel fantastic to press. They feel nice to press under your finger, but when it goes to QWERTY, you cannot type uh, to save yourself, really. The QWERTY keyboard on this thing is trash. Uh, and you know, you go to type something and you've literally got to type like a old grandma, you know, with the two fingers and stuff because it just doesn't work on a light touch like you would be with a normal keyboard. As I said, I don't want this video to be too long. So if you've got any questions or saw something that you want me to dive more deeply into, let me know in the comments and I'll make another video within the next week or so. I'd love it if you did the usual stuff, like give me a like, uh, also subscribe and hit that bell icon to get more notifications and I'll see you on the next one.